their beautiful beings on my live page, my personal page. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so happy today. I cleared out a major chapter. Um, yeah, this year, and it's just been such an incredible journey of just constantly traveling while the whole world was locked down. Um, and then obviously like the world didn't, you know, lock down the whole time, but I still was traveling when most people were just choosing to stay at home. So that was quite, quite an experience. And, um, today was my last day at this job and it was yeah, it just felt like, oh my gosh, there's something changing, there's something shifting here, something new coming through, um, you know, I'll be able to fully focus on my online world and my online business um, for the next few months, which I'm so excited about because I've, you know, yeah, I just have so many things coming up that I, I just feel super excited. Anyway, so today I got home and um, I was really re reflecting on a few things already on my way back. And, you know, I sat down to meditate <clears throat> and I realized, oh my gosh, like there's all these weird things that happen to me when I'm doing my spiritual stuff. And I never really talked about it. And I guess the reason why I'm coming on is because, hmm, in a way I feel like it's so strange. I feel like I'm the only one. And then on another level, I'm like, I can't possibly be the only one. <laughs> you know, that, you know, who who goes through these, these things, you know, with spiritual practices and spirituality. And, you know, when I say spirituality and spiritual practices, I actually mean centering and connecting with source, whatever that, that is, you know, whether you're, um, <clears throat> you know, following a certain religion or not, I do believe that there's a very specific way that we plug into source is actually always the same. And, the way I learned this actually was um, um, like after years and years of disconnecting from um, Christianity and like the Christian religion um, and, you know, following more of a like a new, I would say a new, new age practice really. That's really where, where I was, I was heading. Um, I actually feel that um, like I, my grandmother was very religious, like she would, wake up super early in the morning and she would pray even before she'd get out of bed um and then she pray several times during the day as well and then in the evenings she always like it was like a practice of an hour of just praying um sometimes even two or three hours like you know before dinner and then you know just before she went to sleep and, you know, as I was witnessing her the last time, actually it was around this time last year that I saw her for the last time, I realized that all these things is, is she just, you know, she still keeps doing this, right? She still keep, keeps praying. She, you know, she still kept doing all her beautiful, cute little rituals that she did. And she was very, yeah, very religious. Like she didn't ever, I don't think that there was a day that went by that she didn't pray. Like, I think she was very dedicated and committed to that. Um, it, it just became such a part of her everyday life, really, that, um, yeah, it's like she couldn't even disconnect from that. And then obviously she'd go to church and, you know, when she couldn't walk anymore, she would just listen to the church on the radio and on, on TV. And she would just, you know, get into this, this trancey zone immediately, right? And, you know, as I'm reflecting really now and I'm looking back, a lot of the things are very similar you know it's like you you center yourself you you focus right you focus your mental body on a specific on a specific task and you just repeat right you rinse and repeat like that rinse and repeat status <laughs> when i was a kid it used to freak me out so much because like i already prayed i already did this like well, well, why should i do this again <laughs> So I did, you know, I did go through a period in, in my life where I actually disconnected from from God altogether. I was a bit of a rebel and, you know, I didn't I didn't understand it. I think there was a lot of misconceptions that I just couldn't spin my head around and I didn't agree with as well. So it was just very obvious that that was not something that I wanted to do. Anyway, cut things short. Um, in my 20s, I did, you know, find 
a different kind of practice. And, you know, it was actually through yoga that I, I really started to, um, yeah, become aware of mindfulness and just mindfulness and how mindfulness actually affects us. Um, and I had some amazing, um, yeah, experiences with yoga, especially at the end, like the Shavasana, like I think I actually did my very first out of body experiences in Shavasana without knowing that that was even a thing, you know, and now that I'm realizing, well, I did that when I was a kid all the time, right? Um, anyway, the things I really want to talk about are these weird things that happened to me. And I really wonder if there's anyone out there who really has experienced anything like this or just other weird things that happen to you. Um, but yeah, today I was sitting in meditation and I mean, this happens to me so much, right? Like these are not things that have just happened one as a one off. It's this has been, you know, very recurrent, like on in my practice for a long time. Um, so when I really started to focus, I guess, on meditation was around 2010 when I moved to London, I actually attended some meditation circles and some spiritual like new age gatherings um where i became familiar with the actual practice of meditation like i i never thought that i it was something that i could really do you know i thought i, I just looked i just looked funny i just looked a little silly and i didn't really want to do it um but then obviously you know when you practice you realize well there's actually something else and in the beginning it really was more about focusing like just focusing my mind on something because i just couldn't stop thinking i actually thought the whole time it's all about you know trying to stop yourself from thinking <laughs> um and what really helped was actually to connect with my breath like connecting with my breath definitely helped for me to just you know get that that erratic nature of the mind to soothe and calm down um but already very early in my meditation practices, I realized that there's this thing that starts to happen after a while. And it's like this spinning sensation that actually amplifies. And it's like, I'm sitting down, right? And I'm just like feeling, and you know, sometimes I have like these tremors, like going through my body. And it's not something that I actually will physically intend to do. It's just, you know, with the relaxation of my body, this just happens, right? It just like, it just occurs that I have like some, some shaking going on, like some tremors, some, um, yeah, like, um, sometimes it's like, it feels like, um, like bouncing. And, um, I know that there is an electromagnetic field that surrounds the earth. And I know that, you know, as sentient beings, we are actually we actually respond to that electromagnetic field, whether, you know, we're aware of it or not. And to me, the way I just keep explaining it to myself is that I'm just feeling some kind of energy circuit going through and that's how my body calibrates to it. Like I can't, you know, express it in any other way. So that's a thing that really happens. And sometimes it's this sensation of feeling um like my body is like spinning in a like in a spiral in a helix and you know and sometimes i just feel the energies kind of like swivel swiveling around and turning around me and sometimes my body actually will follow it and i'll literally be doing you know i'll be following that spiral movement and i know some people you know um talk about this and they say that it's, it's the kundalini energy because it's you know this spiral that you know serpentine <clears throat> um yeah movement like moving through the body going up and, and back down um and actually one of my favorites like spiritual teachers that i i attend like whose classes i attended back in london her name is is skylar akamizis she's a very powerful spiritual healer as well um she would explain it to me because I, you know, I was very curious about it. I, I said to her, like, what is this actually about? Like, why do I spin in one specific direction? And it was always like to the left, right? And she explained something to me that was really quite fascinating. I didn't know how to place it back then. <laughs> Today, I'm just like, that makes so much sense. <clears throat> but she said that there's actually, um, there's a, an influence of the planet of Venus that um, <clears throat> that comes, you know, and sort of emits the frequency to the planet and a lot of us women are actually connected with that feminine energy and feminine ag energy apparently rotates towards the left um and 
well, whether you, you name it feminine or masculine, it's just, you know, a polarity, right? Like both energies exist. But I do feel that there's some days when I'll be spinning, you know, very naturally to the left. And um, sometimes I'll spin very naturally to the right. And it's not something that I'm actually forcing myself to do. It's just that I'm, you know, in meditation, I'm not even thinking about it. When I realize it, my body is creating all these movements, right? Oh, Jennifer, are you watching? I actually, I can't see who is watching, which is so weird. Um, normally it tells me like how many people are watching today. For some reason, I can't see it. Um, but I'm so happy that you're watching, Jennifer. I was wondering if you feel it through the body or around the body or both. Do you mean the spiral or do you mean the shaking? Um, yeah, I'll just... So, yeah, so then going on with this Venus influence, um, it's funny because I actually am, you know, born, uh, a born Taurus. Like my son, my sun sign is Taurus and Taurus is connected with Venus. Like Venus is like the, the regulating planet of Taurus. So that's a very interesting piece for me because she said, well, that definitely is the, you know, is connected to that. So what I, I would be feeling would be this Venus, these Venusian, energy right this divine feminine connection and today that makes so much sense because actually when i'm doing my dance practices and i'm doing my dance manifestation rituals and and all of that i will feel you know like certain certain spirally movements even inside my my own dancing and it's very natural um and i even um i've always been fascinated actually like you know talking about the spiral Yay! <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Yes, it's the spiral energy. Okay, so yeah, like for the spiral, so I'll come back to the spiral energy and, you know, like um, what I wanted to say with dance. Uh, spiral energy, like really the way I feel it is, hmm, it's more like an, it's a result. I'd say yes, it's, it's, it's just a natural result, you know? It's like I'm sitting down in meditation, I breathe, I focus, I go into this kind of like transcendental state. I start to levitate up and I'm starting to feel, you know, the shaking, the, the things, the movement, right? Sometimes my head will actually be spinning. And what is really freaky is my head sometimes will spin so fast. It literally, you know, it will be like that, but it'll be like te like. 50 times the speed it's crazy and you know i really have to surrender because it's if i start thinking about the fact that i'm that my body's actually doing that i'm, I'm actually afraid i might injure myself because it's not it doesn't feel that it's human in any way it's so strange so that's something that happens so i do feel the energy spinning around me but it's more like a a result and then because of that result I actually feel the energy even more right it's like my body kind of I guess it's like going on a motorway like on a highway so you're just driving right and at some point you know you have to like go in and then you take your little curves and you know you go up and then you go down and then da -da 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 -da, and then suddenly you have to like you know take over um, and then at some point you sink right you sink with the traffic and you go right? And I feel like that's what my body does. I feel like when my body is really, you know, levitating through the different dimensions, because it's actually a very specific layout in the dimensional field that I actually can talk about this if you, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I do feel like it's kind of like this sinking synchronization thing. So it's not, you know, I will not necessarily feel the energy outside of me. For me, it's very difficult to feel out energy outside of my body because I'm very, like, body-based. So I will feel it inside my body. And often it's like the physical response will come. And then I realize, oh, my gosh, this energy is actually so much bigger. bigger and I can sense that the spiral that my body is in, it's like my body is inside one spiral, but I can see that the spiral is actually so much broader than that. Um, so I guess I would I would see it, you know, like with um, with my, um, yeah, like 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 seeing like the uh, the different uh, senses because we have different um, 
like this clairaudience, this clair, clairvoyance, right? So this would be more of a clairvoyant thing where I'm actually seeing in my, you know, in in my peripheral like clairvoyant vision, um, I will see the spiral or I will feel it. Like I'm, you know, very much a sentient, like I'm clairsentient, I feel things very much. And it makes so much sense because I'm also, also in the human design, I'm actually a generator. Um, so feeling the impulse for me is super easy. So all the teachings that I have been doing for home, like my whole life with spirituality has always been, yeah, just feel into your body. This is what, you know, if it's a full body, yes, a full body, no. And I realized, oh my gosh, I've been teaching all these things. And this, it makes so much sense because generators are all about the sacral response, it's a, you know, and the sacral response is inside our body. Um, so, yeah. Like, I don't know, does this answer your question? If you're still watching, Jennifer, um, does this make sense? And have you experienced this? Because for me, this is like, it's super huge. So that's a, a thing. And then, you know, the whole neck spiraling thing is sometimes really freaky. And sometimes it'll be like sideways. And it's like, I will feel this, like, one is one thing that's interesting is that I will feel the spiral helix, you know, sometimes my body will go into the left motion. But actually, I will feel inside the left motion that there's also a right motion, right. And apparently the spiral is always interlinked with the other with the other side. So the left spiral is always going to be interlinked with the right spiral. And actually, it's an infinity symbol. So when you are actually, you know, really circling, and this is so interesting because when I was studying dance and my teachers would, um, you know, talk about the different um, isolations that we have to do with our chest, they would always talk, well, you actually go to the left, but you have to think of the right as well going the other way. And it will make your it will make your movement even smoother. And, you know, when then Skylar was saying, well, actually, that one sided motion is also the other sided motion so it's like to the left as much as to the right that you know it actually does create this this um you know infinity symbol which is this you know this eight symbol and i will feel that my body even though it is spinning to the left sometimes i will do things like that and when i'm making the spirals smaller this is when i'm really feeling it that there's actually the going you know this it's like when the spiral is on the big side, I, I have to follow. It's almost like a bigger wave. But if I make the spiral, you know, if I'm consciously, you know, awake in that motion and I'm feeling, I'm actually feeling my body going to the left um, and I'm consciously like, um, you know, not restricting the movement, but just making it smaller and smaller and smaller, I actually will feel that inside the power to the left is also the power to the right spiral. And it's incredible when I'm feeling that. It's like, it's, it just, um, it feels like this very um, intense balance of it's so locked in and, and tight together that you cannot separate it. And I feel like it comes back to, yeah, like the particle, um, like, is it a particle or is it a photon? Like, is it, is it like a, an, an atom or a photon and how those two are very close together, right? Like matter, substance, like, you know, the density of matter and the attraction phase, right? Like the attraction in matter. And I feel like the breaking down of this, the left to the, or the right spiral, you actually really come back to that essence of there is this magnetic force holding everything together in the universe. And, you know, as much as it is holding it together, it's also expanding. So you have both ways, always, you know, as much as you go in, you can also go out, right? Like to the infinite in and to the infinite out, to the infinite up, to the infinite down, like all the crisscross directions actually meet and converge in that point. And I feel that when we're really meditating and we reach these high levels of consciousness, um, our body is actually impacted by that. There's an impact and it's not happening because you are willingly forcing your body to do a movement it actually occurs because um 
you know it's an energetic response of the universe right it's your it's your expansion on your consciousness level that will actually you know you you're bringing it down into this plane really you're bringing the experience down into this plane and this is a very important aspect for me as well because when i'm meditating and i'm receiving all these crazy huge visions um you know when i'm channeling sometimes like i've been channeling my latest program everlasting as well and there is always always a body memory that goes with it and when i can you know like that bodily sensation that i'm feeling while i'm channeling actually helps me to remember the information that i received during the meditation practice so those are a couple of weird things that happen um Another thing that I've, you know, noticed is movements with my fingers. So sometimes it'll be like these, these, um, you know, hijack kind of like these, um, yeah, like almost like um, tense, but it's not tense. It's more like a, just like flicking, flicking energy. So that I will feel like twitches. And sometimes, you know, it actually will bring my body to move, right? And one of the things that occurred, I spoke about this in um, in one of my last posts that I actually did this Salvia Divinorum experience. I didn't say that it was Salvia Divinorum, but I did an experience with Salvia Divinorum. It was my very first experience with plant medicine and also my last experience with plant medicine um, back in 2010. And... This was at the very beginning of my spiritual journey, and it was a funny thing that happened because I was with a brother, with a friend, like my brother, my brother's best friend, um, and you know he he uh, he knew this plant very well, so he was basically just showing me how it works, and you know he was just there to support me through the journey. And what happened is that he actually put a dose, and it kind of like it kind of burned out because you have to put it, you know, inside a a specific inhaler and it kind of you know it fizzled out and it actually I didn't even get to to um, you know inhale it and he then doubled you know he just put another dose on and what happened is it was such a strong dose I actually just immediately like you know immediately just went into trance and so I had different visions in there I don't want to go too deep into this because I also feel it's it's, it's a little personal I don't want to you know like fully reveal it but there was one very specific moment because there was music playing in the background and I very clearly remember that the music turned into movement so it's like I was seeing the patterns of the music and as I was seeing the patterns of the music my body started to respond to those patterns that I was seeing in my own clair clairvoyant vision and what occurred is I started to move, I started to dance. And I feel like that was really the very first time that I actually danced in my life where I felt that I wasn't directing my body. Like, of course, like I'm moving my body, it's my muscles with, you know, my brain was somehow creating that movement. But it didn't feel like my I was actually directing the movement. It felt more like a surrendered movement. And that very memory <laughs> that I had in that, um, you know, in that session with Salvia Divinorum and this surrendered movement is something that I now, you know, that I then developed over the years. And I figured out that that's the place where we actually manifest. Like, you know, I developed a whole theory around this. And it's not a theory. It's something that I've, you know, I've tried. <laughs> it's a tried practice. I have clients who, who have gone through this. Um, if you want to know more about dance manifestation, you can, you know, go purchase the course on my platform. Um, but the place where I really go super deep in is in the Cosmic Goddess program. And I will talk about this, you know, this movement that you don't actually initiate, that you don't control. And this is why, because when you are entering the trance state, there will be a moment when it feels like you're unplugging from your body. But it's not that you're unplugging, there's no separation occurring. It's simply that your body is surrendering to what is coming through and you become the vessel of receptivity of, you know, this super high frequency and this very high consciousness. And so that is what it feels like when I'm meditating and I'm moving my body, 
right? And, you know, sometimes it will have these outward movements. And I, I know that these movements actually mean something, right? So when I'm meditating and I'm, you know, say I'm experiencing something, you know, going out into the world or going out into the cosmos, I will actually do these giving movements, right? And they happen outside of my direction. It's more of a, you know, my my arms kind of enter a circuit. And sometimes they will enter that circuit. And just the same as what happens to me with my head, I actually have, it happens with my physical body where, you know, like my, my arms, you know, like my hands will do these circles or my forearms will do these circles. And sometimes they are so synchronistic, like it will happen so quickly that I would never in my mind be able to direct that. I, I couldn't orchestrate that movement if I wanted to because because of the speed that they happen into and because of the natural way they click in it's just such a such a profound and deep experience where i i just couldn't direct it like i i can't explain it in any other way truly it's just it just it feels like as i said again before it feels like my body is entering this 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 you know transcendental motor way and when i'm on that highway i just sink in and when i'm sinking in my body does what it needs to do because it's somewhat probably transmuting transmitting receiving the information and that information isn't cognitive information it's actually they are light codes they are codes that actually in, impregnate my body <laughs> literally with memory and that creation of memory inside my physical body is how i know that it isn't something that I created that I made because I haven't experienced that sensation before. So it's also at the same time, it's a way on how I know that I'm entering the transcendental state. And on the other side, it's also how I know that I'm actually still here in this present moment. So it works both ways. It works in the way where I'm going up and I'm, you know, scaling up into, in the transcendental level. And on the other side of where I'm scaling, you know, I'm bringing that super ethereal, um, you know, conscious information back down into my physical body without trying to make sense of it. So it's like unfiltered information that I receive. Um, yeah. And then what also occurs to me is sounds. This is something that has happened before. But it's really this past year what this has become so acute. It's like I'll create these natural just sounds, just reverberation. And sometimes, you know, I will actually push the sound for it to go super loud. And I feel like I'm in the middle of the void, literally screaming my head off. <laughs> and what is very specific with these sounds is that they are very long sounds. It feels like I don't even need to breathe, which is so strange because, I mean, I'm normally good with holding my breath, but these sounds, sometimes they can last for a minute or two. And it never feels like I have to catch myself of breath, you know. And one of the things and, you know, how I actually really went into trusting this was that when I did my Vipassana meditation retreat a few years ago, back in 2018, what occurred is, you know, there was this monk who was doing these teachings and, he, you know, in simplified words, he said that after a, after some time, when you're actually really entering this, you know, transcendental state, your body will feel like it just stops breathing because it needs very little energy. It needs very little breath, right? And I did have some, you know, very close experiences where I'm like, wait, I was just gone for at least five minutes. Like, I didn't feel myself breathing like or I was you know either I I was breathing so shallowly right where it's just like a tiny little energy going in and a tiny little energy going out or I literally I feel like I wasn't breathing at all it's like my, my, my chest wasn't even you know going doing anything you know it just felt like I stopped breathing for a while it was so weird um and I don't even know if this would be possible at all. Like, is it biologically, scientifically provable, like backable that I actually stopped breathing? 
I'm not sure, you know, and I, I, I can't tell you whether for sure that I really stopped breathing because maybe I was in such a transcendental state that I just lost awareness around my body. But it was definitely a freaky experience. And now that I do these sounds when I'm meditating and they are so long, um, you know, it feels like there's a way on how the sound will sync with the breath in such a way where I don't even need to inhale or exhale it's like the inhale and the exhale happen all at the same time however they are necessary and i'm I, i'm creating a sound at the same time and i know for sure that sounds are healing um you know i've i've experienced this is um uh what's her name the naked voice by chloe goodchild i think it's it's her name um, I did I did a workshop with her in, in London at the time she wasn't known at all and now she's like super famous um, but she creates you know workshops with sound and with the voice and she will you know teach different things around the voice I really recommend her I think she's an absolutely amazing lady um, and I, I definitely advocate for her work like I've had the most incredible experiences in her uh, workshops and she teaches a sequence of sounds that you can use in order to to bring your uh, actual chakra system into balance with these very specific sounds like you know I can't remember what the sounds are now <laughs> because it's been too long but I know for sure that if this is something that calls to you go look her up and you know see what she what she teaches um, yeah some really powerful things in there and I remember um, that there was this very unique moment in the workshop where you know i felt so awkward creating these sounds like what is this about i don't even know what this is about and at some point i just synced you know it just went okay it's fine i'm feeling weird i'm just gonna put that to the side i'm gonna practice i'm gonna try this if it doesn't work it doesn't work right and now i'm creating sounds all by myself <laughs> and it's like okay i had to actually surrender i feel like a lot of these weird things that we can experience with with our spiritual practices most of them really are about surrendering it's about letting go and letting your body do what it's got to do right um, because there's actually an intelligence in the body that cannot be accessed in any other way unless you let the body do what it's got to do right um, and Another piece that comes in at the same time with this surrender, right? With surrendering, allowing the body to do what it's got to do is also trust. It's trusting that your body is going to catch itself somehow. Trusting that the body is going to be much more powerful than you even understand and comprehend. And that it's actually going to be accessing levels of information that you cannot cognitively and rationally explain nor um make sense of right it it just won't make sense that's why i named this video as the weird things with spirituality because they are weird you cannot explain them right um and so yeah that that's definitely a thing that I feel like, oh my gosh, does anybody else do this? Like, please let me know if you're watching and you you have experienced this. Like, please let me know what your experiences are when you're entering the transcendental state. So, um, yeah, let's see if there was something else that I wanted to say. I will talk about the dimensions as well. I wonder if I should talk about the dimensions in another video because... Um, there's so much to the dimensions. I feel like I could go for another another hour on this, <laughs> at least, uh, the very least. So sounds, yeah. And yeah, so now what also happens to me since, you know, a few, a, well, actually a year now, um, is that I, I started channeling this light being. Um, and I had the very first visions with her um, back in 2010 2011 when i started my meditation practices and she appeared you know in vision so at the time i think my clairvoyance was very strong um so i would see things better than i could hear or better than i could feel you know like seeing inside my internal third eye perspective 
was a lot more approachable and I feel like it might be because I'm a dancer and I'm very visual and even when I'm learning I'm very visual um so that was just you know the clear scent that I had um yeah that was the closest to me back then um what did I want to say <laughs> yeah so this light being so when she came to me, in the beginning, I would just see this white, you know, this white um, being. And I was like, who is this? And she did tell me her name back then. And I know it was something with an A, but I couldn't understand it because I was like, what did she say there? I can't figure this out. <laughs> and, you know, I couldn't really hear very well yet. And then I heard that actually you can clear we have chakras in our ears and you can ask, you know, your spirit guides and your angels to clear them. And that was a, it was such an aha moment. I'm like, what? I have a chakra system in my ears? <laughs> How does that work, right? Like we always worry about clearing all our seven chakras, but we have so many more chakras. We even have chakras around our wrists and, you know, our, um, yeah, like this, this place here in our wrists, there's some chakras there. There's a chakra here. Like we have different ones, even in our backs, we have, you know, um, around our kidneys, like some of our organs actually have, have the chakra system too. And even though they are all related with the main chakra system that everybody knows, there's actually very specific chakra systems that don't, you know, necessarily, you know, um, yeah, it doesn't pertain to the same, the same uh, chakra system that we all know, like the, the basic traditional seven chakra system. You know, there's there's um, systems um, with a way more chakras. So anyway, so I proceeded to okay, so maybe I can clear them. Let's see if I can clear them. And then I started to work on that to just clear, you know, these these ear chakras. And in fact, I started to hear, you know, messages. Um, and you know went into automated automated writing as well like that's another another story <laughs> as well that i do um but yeah so then i started to hear her and it's like it was very clear this voice was became clearer and clearer and she came in to teach me different things about you know the ego what the ego actually is you know what it's there for and you know i had received some powerful like transmissions from her back then and i was like this is so messed up i don't even know how to position this like what was this whole thing about <laughs> what i'm riding on the horse and i have to imagine that the horse is actually my ego and it's just wild and wants to be tamed like what the hell is that <laughs> and i could i swear to god i really felt like that was a, an astral projection or an out-of-body experience where i really was on that horse it felt like i was on the horse like I could feel the balance, I could feel the movement of the horse, I could feel the temperature of the horse. Like it was like I was actually sitting on that horse, riding the horse in the gallop, right? And trying to, um, you know, tame it somehow. And it's like if I try to tame it, it's not going to work because it's, you know, it's essence. It's meant to be wild. Um, so that was a very powerful one. And there was a few other things, but she then disappeared. I never, you know, saw her again in my meditations. And that was really awkward. It's like, wait, you came in, do me all these things, and then you just go again. What is this about? Um, but I never worried too much. And last year, it was just so potent. She came back and it was just like, boom, here I am. <laughs> and I started to channel her. And first, you know, it was just sounds and singing, right? Like the sounds and the singing. And then I figured out, well, actually, she's also not just, you know, a light being. She actually has, um, you know, a very specific blueprint of ancient Lemuria. So if you don't know, ancient Lemuria was actually an ancient civilization, um, you know, based, um, well, the land of Mu, also M-U, um, so Lemuria and uh, one of the bases that I found out is actually in Hawaii like you know actually sank um, into Hawaii like the Hawaiian islands are still um, very much steeped in uh, the magic and the energy of uh, ancient Lemuria which I also didn't know I only found out after I came back from Hawaii that Hawaii actually had Lemurian energy so that was very freaky and so when she came back last year I started to channel her and really I, I was just like this is so messed up like this is so weird like nobody's ever going to believe me that I'm doing this like I couldn't even believe it myself because the thing is like when I'm, I'm starting to channel I channel and then 
I forget the information. I'm like, that's such a shame because I would have loved to re-listen to this. So, you know, I, I found a way to snap out, like to sneak out of my meditation transcendent, transcendental state and then sneak back in. So sneak out, press record on my phone and sneak back into the same vibration. And you know, when the reason why I can do this is because there's this there is this physical memory, right? Like I will actually remember what it feels like to be on that frequency. So it's like, I just go back in, rewire. It's like, you know, you, you go out of the motorway, you, you find your things, you tank your gas or do whatever you need to do. And then you do your little maneuvers and here you are back in sync, right? Like that's really how it works <laughs> in the simplified version. And I started to record myself um, just for fun right and in the beginning i was like this is so weird nobody's ever going to want to listen to this and i was like it doesn't matter i'm just going to keep you know recording whenever she comes she comes right um and yeah like i've channeled some pretty powerful messages like for myself personally for whoever is ready to receive this and i just started to upload it on my soundcloud so it's up there like if you want the link for that just let me know um so you can go in and, and, and tune in. But, you know, I, I, I warn you, this is some weird stuff. Like, it, it's not um, it's not like we are talking right here. Like, it's not this 3D, beautiful, like, this makes sense. I'm explaining this and then I'm explaining that. Like, the, the jargon that she uses, even the voice note and the, the voice tone and the different, yeah, choice, like, the word the words that she will use is so different from even I feel my own language sometimes um and yeah like it's very even the way I talk is I feel like I don't even have the same pitch it feels like sometimes when I'm listening like is this really me it doesn't sound like me at all this is, it doesn't sound like I would speak English at all it just sounds different anyway so it's very a very interesting experience and i feel like this is this has become possible over the years because i just surrender right and i trust okay my body is doing whatever it needs to do and that's it i just get to surrender to that i just get to open up to that and i just get to see whatever is coming through um and you know she's been like beckoning me going well actually there's going to be people who are going to want to listen to this there's going to be people who might want to have a session you know you channeling me to them and i'm like yeah sure maybe sometime in the future <laughs> but it's it you know it's like i receive the information and i'm not trying to like go crazy on it i'm not trying to um push it in any way i'm not trying to um force it in any way i'm not trying to make sense of it i'm like this is information it's coming through it will make sense whenever it needs to make sense and i feel like sometimes it's like the yeah this freakiness around this experience these experiences because we will receive such huge and deep information and we don't know what to do with it and maybe it won't be the time yet um and so this brings me to automated writing with which is something that i started to do in it was 2013 or 14. i was sitting in my favorite park in london again because i lived in london for eight years so a lot of my of the things that i i have had actually occurred to me in london um i was sitting in the park and I just, you know, was actually drawing, you know, like the things you do with kids. Um, it was autumn. It was around, um, yeah, September, October time. I was just sitting in this, you know, the last rays of sun before the winter started to kick in. And I had a leaf, you know, inside my journal and I started, I had a, a pencil and I was just like, you know, drawing over the leaf. And then when you take the leaf out, you actually see the, the structure of the leaf. And at some point I'm starting to feel this weird sensation as if you know like my body started to move and like a little bit by itself and i'm like what is this and you know my like i can feel my hands like <laughs> opening the page up taking the pen starting to write and i'm like what what is this you know um and by the time i finished i had written a letter from my deceased grandfather to me and I was so shocked because I just, 
never knew that was something I could do. <laughs> I, I never knew this was even a thing. Um, yeah, and so this happened a few times that same year. Um, and it was, it was quite an experience. And I still have, you know, all the notes. Um, haven't read them back since, but I know for sure that, you know, during all these years, there were some moments when I read whatever he wrote and I'm like, oh my gosh, this actually really happened. This actually made sense. This is what he was, this is what he meant. Um, and then, yeah, some, some months later, some years later, I actually, um, you know, had some other experiences where I was, I was like doing some mediumship for, for a client, um, because sometimes, you know, ancestors will come to me like I can actually go seek ancestors in in my tarot readings I actually don't offer my tarot readings um you know in public space anymore because you know for me this is so sacred work the people who really want this will come to me they will know that I do this and you know they will ask for it um and we will do a, se a session and that's that's just it right um and I started to yeah just you know bring messages from from their ancestors or from whomever you know needed to speak to them um and it just like occurred it just came up you know naturally um and then I did some really powerful um transmissions from an auntie of mine who passed away in I believe it was 2017 16 or 17 it was before I went, you know, my world trip. Um, and that was really freaky because she had literally just passed away, you know, not even a week ago. And, you know, I, I channeled her to, to my parents. Um, and the reason why I know that these are some form of supernatural occurrences is because my physical body feels differently. It feels like it's going somewhere um, and I'm receiving the information and all the body is simply doing is just surrendering and I'm consciously surrendering and allowing my body to do whatever it needs to do. Um, and then that's it. I will make sense of the information or not. It's simply information. It's a transmission of, you know, a code that is being given to me. My, you know, the role of the channel isn't to try to understand what the message is. The role of the channel is to receive the information and to pass it on, right? Yeah, so that day when this occurred, it was really um, interesting because I was actually lying down in meditation and I know that there is a very specific level that when you're actually in meditation, you can't, just disconnect because if you disconnect or you stand up or you do something abrupt with your physical body, you actually lose the frequency. And so I started to sense that she was present and there was this very clear message from her. Like, I want you to, you know, go to your dad now. And I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this because if I, if I actually will stand up, I will lose this connection. Like I know I have, I found the radio station <laughs> and if I do something with my physical body, I don't know if I can, you know, plug back in. And, you know, she was basically from the, you know, afterlife or whatever that source was where she was communicating with me. She was guiding me through the process. Like I asked for her help inside the process, asked for her help to, to show me how to do whatever I need to do. And then, you know, she was giving me instructions. So now you have to lie down. Now you have to do this with your energy. Now you have to do that. And, you know, little by little there, I was standing up, went to see my parents, told them like, this is what I have to say. Um, you know, auntie is here and I have to say something. And my parents, thankfully, are very open-minded, you know, very much in, into spirituality as well. And they were, you know, immediately like, okay, sure. And I did the transmission. And then immediately afterwards, I started to laugh. And within 10 seconds, I started sobbing like a baby. And so the only reason that I was given, it was a gift that was given to me um, 
to have this experience immediately afterwards because there's no way in a human life ever that I could go from hysterical laughter to sobbing like a baby within 10 seconds. It's just not, I can't do it. I've never done it. I don't know how to do it because there's a way on how we actually emotionally will go. You know, our body will have to produce certain types of hormones for us to actually go from one state into the other. And because I experienced that extreme within a matter of a few seconds, that to me was um, the gift of, hey, this actually happened. Um, this isn't, you know, something that you've ever done in your human life because there was a channel that was moving through you. And so it's because of these extreme, you know, physical surrendered states that I know that there is something else, right? This is the, obviously we're tapping into the supernatural, you know, what normal people would call the supernatural, but is it really supernatural? Um, not really, because we actually can all practice and plug in to this source stream, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah. So this brings me back to the automated writing where I was, you know, actually this was on my world trip. I was channeling my granddad again. This was in the beginning of 2018. And I know that he said something about 2020, 2021 in that letter. And I lost the letter. <laughs> I lost it. I couldn't find it back. My mother and I, we literally, like, we turned the whole house around. There was no way we could find a journal with that sheet of paper where I had written, you know, his transmission on. And I said to my mom, this is crazy. Like, this can't just go missing. Like, the journal is like a, like a bright pink, like bright neon pink journal. There's no way it would just get lost in the house. Like, we would find it, right? Like, what happened to it? Um... And yeah, lo and behold, we found it um, shortly, I think when the summer began, so in August or, oh, we found it the day before I left for Santorini and the message that I had written down in, you know, January 2018 was that there was going to be a drastic change on the planet um, 2021 would be, um, there would be a big, you know, like economical crisis and that what we should focus on as a family would be to use essential oils. And so all these years I've always used essential oils to heal myself, to heal whatever is coming up, whether it's, you know, a disease, a cold, you know, um, period cramps, all the things. Like I don't use any medication apart from some uh, herbs that I get from um, my Chinese medicine practitioner on an you know occasional basis. I will use um, plant tinctures, but it's all herbal medicine. And it was pretty cr crazy because I was like, yeah, sure, yeah, DoTerra. I love DoTerra. I love the oils. Like, yeah, sure. Um, but now seeing where we are with the situation that is occurring on the planet and I'm reading this you know from the perspective of post lockdown post whatever has happened to our world in today's world and I'm like holy freaking guacamole I wrote this in 2018 January that was a freaky moment to say the least and things like that have happened to me so many times um, to the point where I'm just like, yeah, this has happened. I know this is for a fact. This is, you know, something that comes to me. You know, I receive these messages. I can't tell you why nor what they mean, but I just know for sure that I'm somewhat you know, working at this skill of transmitting frequency. Um, 
and honestly today's live has been <laughs> just such a natural live like i feel like i've just come in like yeah i want to talk about this i actually want to say a few things and now i ended up telling you my whole spiritual journey these past few years um and there's so much more that i you know i can tell you <laughs> there's actually another experience where you know where i'm going where i went um to an astral projection workshop actually with skylar's husband who is a um, very powerful teacher about astral projection his name is todd akamizes and yeah they they invited me to this incredible out of body astral experience um workshop and i went out of body and i received a huge transmission about dance and about movement and you know this all came together as a fitting you know different pieces that I've picked up on my journey and I'm like yeah that was the very straightforward transmission that I received that you know dance really is the way on how we manifest things this is how we call things into being with our states of being it's just undeniable right like when people talk about the law of attraction and they're saying yeah you just have to feel a certain way um and you have to think a certain way and make sure your feelings match up well da -da, this is what we do in dance like there's no dancer in the world that will dance with their empty with their mind empty you're always thinking about something right where does your mind go when you dance and that is a very powerful question because when you're dancing and you can figure out where your mind goes, well, then you can also figure out how it comes back and you can figure out what comes back energet energetically. You can actually call it into being through your state of being, right? And movement, sound, so movement and sound in space, when you join them together, right? Because movement is literally you using space in a specific period of time. You couple that together with sound. That is the ultimate creation, right? Like the very first creation of this planet, like the Hindu tradition says it, was sound that set things into motion, right? So when you can actually tune into what is in motion inside of you, and you connect and plug into source while you are dancing, you literally can call things into being. And, you know, this is the simplified version. There's a whole science behind this, backing this up. Um, now, you know, that researchers are finding, and, you know, I've been studying this so much because I'm fascinated with, you know, tools that have actually already been given to us by other people who have studied this stuff and you know i found you know that dance manifestation is dance manifestation hey nadia so beautiful to see you here um so dance manifestation is dance manifestation um that's just the tool that i came up with but actually now i'm super passionate about finding all these tools that have actually been given to us before i even thought of dance manifestation as a whole technique um that actually back this up with science there's actually a science that runs through it and you know if you have listened to the call you know in the beginning when i'm talking about my whole spiritual journey and why you know coming back to the body is so important especially coming back to this surrendered state because you have a part where you are actually um, orchestrating the movement but you also have a part where you are surrendering to the movement and when you can vast like oscillate between these two states that really is where the magic lies that's where dance manifestation actually lies that's where all the you know creation and channeling the wisdom and tapping into a zone of genius and you know going into our brilliance and you know accessing these levels of consciousness that are coupled with excellence and you know radiance um and mastery of actually drawing the things to us 
that is where the magic is. This is what we've come here for. We were born for this. There was no... We were born to receive this, right? And so for me, it came in as a tool of dance manifestation because, you know, I've been a dancer all my life and I dance and I love dance. And that's how I plug into source. For you, it could be something completely different. But if you love dance, you can actually use dance as a means to access what your spiritual gift is. And that's what I love about this specific modality so much because when we move both in the directed state as well as in the surrendered state and we know how to access these different gateways with the science that you know has been literally been it's been placed in front of our very eyes <laughs> we just haven't um you know used it maybe in that sequence there's a specific sequence to dance manifestation to any manifestation but i feel like through dance it's the way that um yeah i've accessed this without even trying and yeah just really taking that responsibility back of you know what is it that we really come here for like we've come here to create we are the creators we are an extension of the creative life force we are a miracle in motion truly like you being alive like do you know how many um yeah like how many pieces have to come together in the whole freaking universe for two seeds to meet on that day at that time for you to be born in that specific way into this family into this exact lineage into like that's a whole divine orchestration there's no way this would ever be something you know oh it's just a thing it's not right and so it really is a lot it's it's our birthright to access you know our soul's highest vision it's our birthright to go and fulfill our soul's mission on the planet like that's what we've incarnated for and a lot of us are being shaken at the moment deeply and thoroughly because we're being you know called to work you know, being called to step into our journey. And I've sure felt this, you know, I felt this in the past few weeks. I was talking about, you know, how today was my last day at work. And I could feel in these past few weeks that it's time. I've done my mission. Like, let me go now. Like, let me go do my, <laughs> my soul's mission now. Like, you know, I, obviously it's all a part of it, but what I, I can tell you is there was this giddiness of like, I gotta go, I gotta go. Okay, I've done this now. I've gotta go now. <laughs> when can I go? When can I go? <laughs> like, that's really what it felt like. It felt like, when can I finally freaking go? Because I know what to do. I know what's calling me. I'm channeling all this in information. Like, I've got to do something with it. Like, give me time. Give me space. Give me something. Give me the platform. Like, give me stuff to create it on, right? And it's all been coming together. So let me know if any of these weird things happen to you. I would love to know. Like, am I the only freaky one? <laughs> I, I can't possibly imagine I would be. Like these spiritual practice weird things that occurred to me, I can't possibly be the only one who this happened to. I just cannot imagine that I would be the only one receiving, um, you know, these kinds of things you probably do you know in your own way like what are your weird things you do do you start singing do you start scratching your head i don't know like i would love to know honestly anyway i've been talking for a whole hour like this has been so fun um thank you so much for tuning in if you just tuned in now just you know go back to the beginning if you feel like watching it um and let me know <laughs> if these weird things happen to you or other weird things happen to you honestly um let's start a conversation about this like, let's normalize these these um yeah spiritual occurrences like this could be such a beautiful um yeah just such a beautiful way of really owning these spiritual gifts that we already have right like 
I mean, to me, it's become so natural now that I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did this thing. Yeah, I traveled and then I went there and I went there and I received this information. Like, it just became so, like, yeah, this is just what I do. Um, oh, Medea. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen you in ages on my lives, girl. <laughs> Oh, such a pleasure to be here with you too. Oh gosh, I'm just getting so happy here. Like, I just love you. I love the women in my field. Like, you guys are amazing. It's just, you know, even the men. I have such inspirational men in my in my community. I just love you. Fantastic beings. Um, so yeah, Medea, does any of this happen to you? Like, do you feel this? <laughs> Have you had like crazy wild experiences in your meditation practices? Like, what do you do to channel source? Like, tell me, you know, I want to know. Maybe we can learn. Maybe I can learn something from you. Like, I really want to learn. You know, I believe we're here to really congregate and bring our gifts together and see. Try things on. Like, I would have never been able to try all these things on without having had, you know, the mentors and the, the, the friends, you know, who I've frequented like where where in my field you know like i was able to tap into these amazing frequencies thanks to them you know oh craig my gosh so many people watching here oh, i'm so happy this makes me so happy well i have to get into bed and get off this blue light like the blue light is just such a such a thing for me like <laughs> i just have this thing with um Oh, Medea, goodness, girl. Everything resonating widely. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that this resonates with you. And I can't wait to hear what your little, you know, what your little weird things are that you do in meditation. I know sometimes it can, this can be, um, you know, sensitive information because I'm like, are the people going to read my comments? Like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to know this. Just feel, feel free to message me um, if this is something, because I really get it, you know, like I, this is the first time I've actually come out of the closet in a life that lasts for an hour <laughs> on this. Like I have never talked openly about this on my public page. Like, my friends will know this. My mom knows this. Like my parents know it because they're, bo they're both very much into you know, meditation, they meditate every day and they have all these practices. Like a lot of my close people know this, but like it's time that my community knows this stuff as well because let's be frank, you know, like why should we, why should we hide, you know, like, I mean, it's not that I was purposely trying to hide it. I think there's a divine timing for everything. There's going to be a divine time for you to be you know, owning your gifts, receiving, receiving, receiving. And then there's going to be a time where like, okay, I'm ready to go out now. I want to, I want to say, I want to say this out loud now. I want to say to people what I really think, what really, you know, occurred to me. And you're coming from a place of power and a place of embodiment. And that in and of itself is so potent, right? Like just talking about things because you want to talk about things. Sure. But if you've actually mastered something and you've, allowed yourself the time to let things sink and click in it's like oh right that's the deal um because yeah you're just accessing a level of of embodiment that you cannot access if you just like immediately you know throw it out so sending you so much love um have a beautiful day or evening wherever you are and I'm so excited to, yeah, see you soon, talk to you soon, um, you know, in the virtual virtual world, in the real world. <laughs> I know some of you are close to my real world as well. Um, and yeah, if I can't come to see you or, or you can't come to see me because, you know, travel restrictions and stuff, we will surely meet up again soon um, in any other way. So mwah, I love you. Um, and yeah, we'll talk soon. <laughs>